welcome to worship at Park Place Christian Church. We are so glad that you are joining us for worship this week. We hope that you feel God's spirit uh, wherever it is that you are worshiping this week. We do ask you to take just a minute, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, take a moment and subscribe and then hit the bell button so that you get notifications uh, whenever we have a new video. We also invite you as you begin worship to get some sort of light source, whether it's a candle or a flashlight, um, in order to light candles with us in just a moment. Uh, and we also invite you to get uh, something to eat and drink, uh, something that you can use in place of communion when we take communion later in this service. And now let us light candles to remind us that the presence of Christ is all around us. Our scripture this week comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 43 to 51. We invite you to follow along as I read aloud. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him whom Moses in the law and the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said to him, Here is an a truly an Israelite, in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you come to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are King of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under a fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. May God's word bless those who hear it. Let us continue to worship in song this day. Blessed be your 
Blessed be your name On the road marked with suffering Though there is pain in the offering Blessed be your name Y'all, I have an elephant here today. Come, come and see. No, come, come a little closer. I have an elephant. Okay, so it is just a toy elephant, but it is an elephant. In, in Kansas, there is a sign as you're driving down the highway that says, come and see world's biggest prairie dog. You get off the highway and you do see a really, really giant prairie dog made out of concrete. Did you hear the words in that sign though? Come and see. The same words that Jesus uses, not Jesus, sorry, the same words used in our story about Jesus. Come and see. Today's gospel is something amazing, unbelievable. Come and see. It's real. These people who Jesus are collecting, who are he's calling in, who are being called to come and see him are people who will turn out to be his closest friends. But even in the beginning, they weren't quite sure. Nathaniel, in particular, wasn't quite sure that it could be because Jesus is from Nazareth. And so he is invited by his friend Philip to come and see. When Nathaniel hears it, it clicks and he gets it. He believes that Jesus is the Son of God, but wait, there's more. It gets better, is what Jesus tells him. You will see heaven open up and the angels of God flying around me. The story of Jesus continues to get better. Come and see, we invite all young and old, to come and see this unbelievable, incredible story of Jesus, the one we follow unfold. Let us worship in prayer. O oh God, through Jesus, you promise to hear us when we pray to you in his name. 
Confident in your love and your mercy, we offer to you this day our prayers. Lord, empower the church throughout the world and in the life of its witness. God, may we break down the barriers that divide us so that united in your love and your truth, the universal church can confess your name, share in one baptism, and sit together at one table and serve you in ministry. Lord, we ask that you guide the rulers of all nations. Move them to set aside their fear, greed, and vain ambition, and bow to your will. Inspire them to strive for peace and justice for the people who they are entrusted with. We pray for the day that children and adults alike will live free from war and injustice and hunger and thirst, free from abuse and neglect. For God, we know this is your will. Lord, in this important week, we pray especially for our nation. We pray that we can have a renewal of justice and of peace. We pray for our leaders that they find a way to uphold peace and be leaders, the leaders that they are elected to be. And I pray, we pray for the people in this country that we can stand up and stand together for the betterment and the unity of all people who live in this country. Guide those who administer and make our laws to build a society of trust and respect. Erase the prejudices that oppress. Free us from crime and violence. And God, guard our youth against the ill decisions made by grown people in this country. Lord, may we all find a new vision for life in harmony together, despite all that has happened in our past. May we find a way to live together honoring one another. Lord, we pray for those who are hungry and suffering. Give us who consume most of this earth's resources the will to reorder our lives that we might find a way so that all people can share food, medical care, shelter, and so many things to have the basic necessities of a life with dignity. We pray that you restore among us a love for the earth that you created to be our home. Help us put an end to the ravishing of its land, air, and water. Give respect for all your creatures so that we may live in harmony with everything that you have made. Lord, we pray that you strengthen this congregation and its work and worship. Fill our hearts with self-giving love, that our voices may speak your praise, and in our lives may conform to the image of your Son, the one who we are called to come and see. May we go and show his example in this world. Lord, we pray these things and we lift our voices with those around the world as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So have you ever heard of a place called Butte, Montana? Some of you may not have. Back in 1977, there was about 33,500 people there. Butte, Montana was a place where it was widely known that parents couldn't keep their kids from committing crimes, that the town made it difficult for anybody to self-improve, and teachers couldn't get their kids to study. And yet, out of this town with so much disadvantage, emerges a man by the name of Brendan Bruchard. Some of you may know that name. Brendan has become a world-leading performance coach. He's somebody who has been on the New York Times bestseller three times. He's responsible for the High Performance Institute, and he is also the instigator of the Expert Academy. Maybe you've heard of Yazoo City, Mississippi. Yazoo City, a town of just about 11,000. But out of this little tiny town came a man who Dallas, Texas knew very well, Zig Ziglar. We would look at these little towns and we would say, what good could come out of them? I mean, after all, they're so small. But Zig Ziglar used to say, you know, at some point, you might think it a disadvantage, but actually, I see it as an asset. After all, he says, you can go anywhere in the world from Yazoo City, Mississippi. You can go anywhere in the world from Butte, Montana. The scriptures today is really about potential possibility it's kind of how Jesus rolls. He came into the world as a little baby, and who would have ever guessed that a, a baby could become a savior of the world? And so in our story here, we are talking about the region of Galilee, a little town called 
Nazareth, a little town that is so insignificant that the only time we hear about it is in our one story. It's not mentioned in the Old Testament at all. It's not mentioned in the Talmud, nor is it mentioned in the Mishrod. So this little town of insignificance gets one mention in our story of Jesus' birth. It's a town that has only one entrance, 15 miles south to the Mississippi. But it's a message that screams to us if we're astute enough to notice that it doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter how gifted you are. But what really matters is what's inside of you and where you go from here. That's the whole story of Jesus. We could pretty much wrap it up in that one sentence and say, it doesn't matter what you came into the world with because there's always there that you can go. Especially in our world today where we have witnessed some pretty tough things in our life just in the last week, not even to mention last year. We live in a world where we're unsure of and wondering where do we tag our security and our safety? Where's our safety net? Who can we trust? Who can we feel that we have somewhere, someone to lean on? Sometimes we evaluate that by people's credentials or from where they come. But Jesus, in our story today, is challenging the reader to look past expectations and to see, to really see where we hang our hat. And who is there to guide us along the way? There's a story, it's a true story, about a man who was trying to run an errand in another town, and don't you know that as he was heading home, his, he, he went to get in the car and it wouldn't start. And he went, ah, oh, I don't have any gas. And so he happens to have a, a, a gallon, two gallon gas tank in his, in his trunk. And so some passerby sees him and says, hey, there's a, there's a gas station just about a half a mile down the road if you wanna go fill up. Nothing off from a ride. <laughs> so he goes down and he gets the gas and he trudges it back up to his car. He, he pours it all into the tank and then all of a sudden he can't open his door. And he's thinking, why, why won't my door unlock? And then he happens to look further up the road and he sees a car that looks so much like this one that's his. So back he turns around to go back to the gas station to get two more gallons of gas and the gas attendant remembers him and he says, you know, It'd be easier for you, instead of having to keep coming back and taking two gallons back to the car, just put that in the car tank and drive the car here. Thanks a lot. Sometimes life is like that. We think we know what we're doing. We, we think we're on the right path. We, we think things are going well, only to discover that we are in the wrong place. Jesus has come that might help us find the right place. Yes, there are hardships in our world. Yes, things happen that are bad. Yes, things that rock our world. And if you haven't been around last week, if you weren't glued to your TV set to see on Epiphany of all times, our capital being run over, did you feel the fear in your heart about not only who's in charge here, but what's going to happen to us? Sometimes it's not until we have some major event that jolts us back into reality to say, where am I putting my faith? Where am I putting my trust? Is it in the right place? Some of you might remember Ozzy Osbourne. He was the lead singer of Black Sabbath. And he was somebody who would tout Satan stuff and black magic and all that kind of stuff and heavy metal. And then his wife ends up with colon cancer. Here's a man who never turned to God, didn't think about God, but instead was 
putting his energies into Satan figures. But then when somebody that he loved had something threatening, guess what he did? He turned back to God. Reba McIntyre has a song out now. If you haven't heard it, it's called Back to God. But it is one of those songs that is really calling our whole community, our whole beings back to God. Where is it that we place our faith in times of trouble especially? Mark Twain, who's one of those guys that, that people loved him, he had such wit about him. And, and one day the German uh, emperor invited him and said, ah, come to our dinner, you will, you will sit among royalty, you will get to sit with those people. And his daughter heard that he was gonna get to be around the, the German emperor and all those people, and she, in her innocent little voice said, wow, daddy, you know most everybody in the whole world, don't you? Except God. Hmm. Out of the mouths of babe. You know, our actions pretty much expose us, don't they? However we act towards others or even in times of tragedy will shine a light upon to whom we belong. In our scriptures today, Philip has an encounter with Christ, and in that encounter, he realizes that all the prophets of old, all the, the, the writings of Old Testament was at this moment, this person, it pointed to him. He was so excited because now his life where he felt lost felt complete, and when he felt so complete and full, he wanted to share it because that's what happens when you have an encounter with Christ. You can't shut up. You can't keep silent. You have to share it. And so it made perfect sense for him to, to go and find Nathaniel. Nathaniel, you got to come and see. Nathaniel, you know, we've been talking about looking for the one whom, whom all the prophets had said. I've, I found him. I met him. I know him. You need to come and see him too. And can you imagine Nathaniel? That's like when, when one of your friends comes because they've got another pyramid scheme somebody's told them about, and you go, yeah, we're, tell me more. Mm -hmm. We have this part of us that automatically begins with doubt, and Nathaniel's no different. He said, wait, he's from where? He's from, he's from Nazareth? You mean that little town that has only one stoplight? You think somebody from that little town has anything to offer me? Nathaniel's like most of us. He is maybe curious, maybe wants to go and meet this guy. But in meeting him, it isn't until Jesus tells him, I know where you've been, that Nathaniel's eyes open, that the scales fall from his eyes, and now he too understands, you are, you are the one. Sometimes it takes us, I'm sorry to say, tragedy, hardship, before we get it. Sometimes it takes a, a wrestling around of our, of our world to say, wait, things aren't right here, are they? I've lived in denial so well, and now this event has shaken me out of my denial. Or maybe you're that one who has said, yes, hardship came my way, but I know what happens when my life is filled with Christ who partners with me. There was a, a young boy who was forced to have the lower part of his right leg amputated. 
And I know it's hard enough going through childhood, but to be a child losing part of your leg means now you're different from everybody else, and everybody will look at you or whisper about you. And, and this was the same for him. He knew that his world had just changed, that reality finally pushed him into reality, but he had made a decision that he was not going to let that hamper his life. He didn't want any pity. He didn't want anybody trying to give him any favors. He wore a prosthesis, and he was, through sheer determination, decided that he wanted to be a gymnast. And he actually started to excel as a gymnast. Through this determination, he actually, in his sophomore year, won a letter from his school. The first day that he wore his sweater into school, letter on the side of his pocket, he was so proud, but he also felt a little bit unsure about how the kids might welcome him. And that day as that door squeaked open and it shut behind him and he began to walk through the school, the kids who were talking all of a sudden became silent. Everyone saw this young man with a prosthesis wearing his letter sweater. And almost as unison as somebody had directed them, they all stood up. They looked at him and they began to clap. Pisha Kraus remembers that day. He said, I'm not embarrassed or ashamed to tell you that on that day standing in front of my classmates, the tears I cried were tears of joy. That for once in my life, I felt like a whole human being even though a part of me was missing. You see, the truth of the matter is, every single one of us feels like a part of us is missing. Maybe through life circumstances, maybe actually through some physical means, but in one way or another, all of us feel like there's some piece of us missing that somehow we don't quite fit in, that somehow we wish so much for people to see us as us and celebrate us. And the reality is, there is one who does see us for us, who sees deep into our heart, deep into our insecurities, deep into those moments where we don't feel we're quite enough, and says to us, you are so loved, you are so valuable, you are whole to me. The events that we have experienced in this last week and projected experiences for the week ahead come out of our realization and knocks us out of our denial that there are real hurting people in this world. Afraid afraid of what we might lose, afraid of who's in control, afraid of.
Heather and I were talking just this afternoon about seeing the Christian flag being held over someone's shoulder at the Capitol. Do you think Christ would be in that mob? I do think the church has a lot of work to do. Somehow or another, we have got to figure out how to not just talk about Jesus and have cute stories about Jesus, but really have Jesus infiltrate the lives of those around us, if not even our own. Jesus calls us to trust him. It's not a story in a book. He's here now. He's here asking us, trust me, let me be your light. On Epiphany, the light. Let me be your light. You just need to trust me. So we have a choice in our day. To whom will we listen to? It took Nathaniel to get some proof about who this guy was. Well, I saw you, Nathaniel, under the tree. But oh, for those who believe who do not see, those who believe where I don't have to prove myself to you, you will see even greater things than what you see now. Do you believe? Do you know you can do greater things? Or have we settled for less We are better than this as a nation. And we are so much better than this as disciples of Jesus Christ. I don't just want to be in prayer, but Lord knows we need it. But I want to be an experience of Christ to those to whom I'm around, that maybe in some small way, their heart can open enough to allow, to allow the light and love of Christ in. Let us not be about violence and vengeance. Let us be about love, togetherness, and abundance. Amen and amen. We, the Christian Church Disciples of Christ, are always so happy to be a part of this meal. We do it every week. Some traditions don't do it every week, but we do every week because for us we know that the world outside these walls tend to, to, to struggle with us and they stretch us into places we sometimes don't want to go but are forced to go. What we've seen in our nation in this past week and what we will continue to see in our nation in weeks to come is that part of the world that tries to pull us into conflict and violence. But we are people of Christ. We don't do that. But what we are good at is bringing people together. One of the things I'm proud about the Christian Church Disciples of Christ is that for over a hundred years, we have a history of bringing people together, different denominations, different traditions. We bring them together to work together because we see and we know that the way to truth and the way to harmony is when we understand and listen to one another. 
So when we come to this table, this isn't just a table where we eat some loaf of bread or whatever you have laying around at home. This is a table that represents Christ who says, I break my body for you, not just you disciples in Wichita Falls or you disciples of Christ, but to everyone around the world. So that when we come together, the various ingredients that make this loaf is the same for our world. The various ingredients of all of us make for something beautiful. But it means we have to be intentional about it. Just like Jesus, who lifted the glass, the wine that reminded them of blood, every time you drink this, might it not just be something you forgot to think about, or I just wanted to get my sip in, but this is a sacred cup of the blood of Christ who died that we might live and live abundantly and live in harmony and live in love and empower his people. That's for whom we gather around this table. You, at your table at home, together apart, may you too feel that as you take in these elements, that you're not just taking in what you have at home, but something that represents the taking in of all people around the world. Let's do that together apart. Well, this is where the mission starts. At the end of our service together, when we've had that respite, where we can come together and just breathe and feel inspired and be together. Now the work begins. As we leave our doors this day, and as we hear threats about our world and our capitals around this country, let us be in prayer about these events let us be in prayer for peace and harmony and not for violence and destruction. As we leave here, we begin our ministry here in the giving that as you give to the ministries of Park Place Christian Church, you're giving to the ministries that reach way beyond these doors or even in our community, but around the world. So be sure if you want to give through GiveLify, or you can give through writing your checks to Park Place Christian Church, we're here for you and continue to be your representatives in the world. We also want to remind you that if you would like to enter our class given by Steve Tucker on the history of Western Christianity, that class begins this week. So let us know and we will be sure that you get the login information. It is a Zoom class, so we'll make sure that you know how to Zoom in. And if you missed the first class, I think you can watch a replay. So let us know what your desires are. As we come to this time in our service, we come to a time of decision. What kind of life will I live? What kind of example will I be when I walk out these doors? Will I follow Christ, and will people see Christ in me? Or will I forget everything I've just heard or learned? It is my hope that you choose Christ today, who will give you a new life you didn't even know was possible. Give him a chance. If you would like to give your life to Jesus Christ, all you need to do is ask him into your heart right here and right now. And if you'd like to, let us know so that we can have prayer with you and further guide you in what's next. Right now, the world is really fragmented. We are a movement for wholeness in a fragmented world. Let that movement begin with us right here and right now. Let's pray. Oh God, as we leave here today, we leave knowing 
that the work ahead will not always be easy and even sometimes be a little frightening. But we know that you walk through us and with us and beside us and you will guide us. For we know that you are stronger and more powerful than any threat to us, to our nation, or to our world. So be with us that we follow you and that we allow you to use us to be peacemakers in our world. We ask all of this in your name. Amen. Givelify is giving simplified. Givelify is the simplest, most beautiful way to give and track donations to the place of worship or charity of your choice. You're not limited to the cash you have on hand. There's no need to write checks, and there are no complicated forms to fill out or text message codes to remember. Givelify automatically pinpoints your location and intelligently identifies the fundraiser, worship service, or conference you're attending without the need to search. Since Givelify automatically detects where you are, making a donation can be completed in as few as three taps. Tap 1. Use one of the pre-configured denominations to choose your donation amount. Tap 2. Select the campaign to which you'd like to contribute. Tap 3. With your stored credit or debit card, complete your donation in one tap and get an immediate donation receipt. Setting up recurring giving is a simple two-tap process. Tap the frequency you'd like, and you'll never forget to make your gift. Givelify lets you easily see your complete donation history. Mark the place of worship you normally attend as your home for quick one-tap access. Givelify. Tap. Give. Done.